What to expect on Sunday when the San Francisco 49ers offense takes the field against a stout Steelers defense. The key matchups there and how are the 49ers going to operate without one Nick Bosa who is still yet unsigned coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers. Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there. We appreciate you. We love you. Whether you're uh, watching us on YouTube or listening to us on your way to work or working out, whatever it is, uh, in any country around the world, uh, we love hearing from you. And we love that you are locked in with us every single day here uh, on the podcast. And make sure you are subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast if you are not an everydayer and become an everydayer. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by bird dogs go to birddogs.com slash locked on nfl to enter promo code locked on nfl you, you, you just go to the go to the website slash locked on nfl at birddogs.com or enter promo code locked on nfl you don't have to do, do both either or and you can get a free yeti style style water bottle with your order you won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you more on bird dogs a little bit later uh croc we are now into we're 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 deep into Monday, which means we're into Tuesday morning now, and still no Nick Bosa signing, and that's a big deal because uh, we're going to talk about one of the guys on the other side of the ball, and I was it was you know on one side obviously it hurts the 49ers not to have one of their best players, maybe the best player not on the field potentially in week one. That's a huge deal, but from a fan's perspective, watching this game. Maybe the two best edge guys in the NFL, the the last two defensive players of the year in the NFL, in TJ Watt and Nick Bosa, you you're robbed of seeing you know marquee NFL players in a matchup in Week One. So that's disappointing from a from a fan's perspective. I saw a great take from Grant Cohen. I know he likes to troll the San Francisco 49er fans, but he actually made a great point, basically saying 49er fans are saying 49ers have the best roster in the NFL, or arguably the best roster in the NFL. But then they're also saying that, well, they can't really win without Nick Bosa. So I, I when I read that, I'm like, you know what? That is a very good point. Like, which one is it? Is it that, obviously, Nick Bosa is very important, but is your roster so stacked that, but then you can't win without him? Like, does he have to be on the field for you to win? And, and if that is the case, then how stacked are you really? So we've made a big put a big emphasis on Nick Bosa needing to be out there on this field for the 49ers to be able to win. But maybe it is a test to how deep they truly are uh, if you know they can or can't win without him. Well, the 49ers record with Nick Bosa is pretty amazing. But you know what's even better than the 49ers record with Nick Bosa? It's the 49ers record with Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey. Mm. And when they're both healthy, the 49ers have not lost a football game. Uh, so... Uh, with and with Brock Purdy especially, so uh, that's that's a nice little tie-in here for what we're going to talk about today with the 49ers offense against that Steelers defense, Croc. And um, you know what I do not want to see is whether it's Charlie Warner, Ross Dwelly, uh, Braden Willis. I don't want to see any one-on-ones with TJ Watt in this football game with the with the 49ers reserve tight ends because. Uh, that's how the 49ers season ended at the end of last year. And I understand the advantage Kyle Shanahan was trying to get on that play. And Brock Purdy, if he saw it quicker, got the ball out quicker, maybe everything would have been different. Maybe the 49ers would have hoisted a Lombardi. But um, whatever like run action advantage you're going to get from a play like that, uh, d- does the uh, does the deep safety, does the, the backside cornerback – is he really keying on the, what the right tackle is doing on a play like that? I think we could leave uh, McKivitz in to help out uh, and maybe George Kittle in to help out as well. Uh, if he's even playing in this game, by the way, because George Kittle has been, been banged up. And 
uh, one of my uh, one of my first takeaways from this game, looking at it, is okay. The biggest matchup here is TJ Watt against Colton McKivitz. This is a big one. It's a huge test right out of the gate for the 49ers' new starting right tackle in his first game as the starting right tackle for the San Francisco 49ers. He gets to go against the 2021 Defensive Player of the Year in TJ Watt in week one. And I would think that it would, and, and Croc, this is something we've talked about in the past where it's like, man, uh, I know George Kittle is a good blocker, but can we target him 10 times a game? Can we get him out on more pass routes? This might be one of the games where it's like, okay, I get it. It's okay to leave George in a little bit more. And, and you kind of have to figure out what side you want to leave him in on. You know, yeah. we talk a lot about Watt and how tr tremendous he is as a pass rusher. There is a guy on the other side, Alex Heisman, and we're not so much worried about him because we know I think he's going to rush a lot off the side of Trent Williams. But he did have 14 and a half sacks last year. So, you know, we talk a lot about T.J. Watt, and deservedly so. But they actually have two terrific booking edge rushers that can be a little problematic. Yeah, 14 and a half sacks for uh, Alex Highsmith last year. And, you know, Trent's probably not going to get a lot of help in this game. But I, I don't know if there's any 49ers regular that played less in the preseason and practiced less in training camp than Trent Williams. So, like, we're just kind of over here expecting, look, he's the best left tackle in football. He's going to throw a perfect game. You know, like you, you, he's not going to lose one time. You know what I mean? That's kind of like the mindset of it. But man, that's a really good player over there. Alex Highsmith, it wasn't for TJ Watt and, and on a lot of rosters in the NFL, he might be the number one edge guy on a lot of teams, uh, you know, with 14 and a half sacks last year. So that that's, you know, and that's going to be a lot of one on ones, um, which leads me to think that this is going to be a game where the 49ers do everything they can to get the ball out of Brock purdy's hands as quickly as possible uh including just turning around and handing it off i don't know if you watch uh, ha uh, halloween ends and i'm a big michael myers fan to me michael myers is the big man. Uh, i'd probably compare tj watt to michael myers in the sense of just you know his ability to just kill you and kind of what he does. I mean, yeah. this is a guy who's very I, I talked about high smith and just having two bookends that are problematic but the way that Watt wins and how many forced fumbles. I mean, I'm kind of terrified for that elbow of, of Brock Purdy hitting in this game because Watt comes around that edge and he's he's going for the ball and he's going for that arm. And, and that's going to be very consistent. But in Halloween ends, Michael Myers actually had a sidekick. And it was kind of weird. You know, Michael Myers, he's always done his dirt by himself. And this one, they kind of gave him a sidekick. And I think that's who, like, Alex Highsmith is now. In this movie, they both died. And Spoiler alert, if anybody, if you didn't watch the new latest Michael Myers. So I think it's all over. But they both died. So can the 49ers not kill Highsmith and uh, Watt, but can they dominate them? Right? Can they take them out of the game somehow? Take away Michael Myers and his sidekick. Uh, how do you do it? Is it, you said, quick game. Maybe some misdirection. Uh, screens, getting guys going upfield. Throw the balls behind them. Like, how do you get TJ Watt out of a game, a guy that could be so disruptive? Yeah, and don't start George Kittle in your DFS leagues, yeah. right? So you're saying just leave leave Kittle in the block. I, and I think I think he will have those responsibilities. And it's one of those games where I think it's it's warranted. And it's not because I don't believe in Colton McKivitz, but let's just make sure and let's not have what happened in the NFC Championship game to Brock Purdy happen in Week One of the stinking season. You know what I mean? Like let's let's protect that blind side let's protect that backside uh against one of the best rushers in the nfl and george kittle who's already banged up i don't know if it's a guarantee he's even going to play in this game i i think most people will believe that george kittle's going to play uh but he's already on the injury report to start the week and so um, did he practice today i did not see if he practiced today if you can find that let me know yeah, I'm so um, but Man, um, the, the, this this screams Christian McCaffrey, run the ball a lot, get the ball out quick, screen game, slants to Debo, catch and run stuff, quick game all day long. That, that's that's the simplest way I could probably project what I think will happen in this game. And, and a lot of it is just because who you're going against, early season stuff, get a rhythm going. Um, and, and the 49ers have started slow in recent years. Like if the 49ers go out there and lay an egg in week one, it's not going to be something that's surprising. 
And it's not going to be something that they haven't overcome in the past to go to the NFC Championship game. So I have the practice report here on guys who are kind of injured. And this is from Cam Inman, who covers the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, he says, uh, no Bosa, of course, as we know. Uh, but he says, quarterback Brock Purdy, done deloading. So he's full go. George Kittle works on this side as our Tayshawn Gibson, Oren Burks, Jordan Mason, and Danny Gray. And Danny Gray, who's obviously on the IR. So mm -hmm. um, Dre Greenlaw, Talanohu Funga, they are back at practice. And uh, Matthew Wright, new kicker. And Jake Moody, not in uniform, but both are kicking. So, Or Jake Moody's not in uniform, but they were both kicking. But ultimately, George Kittle, we were asking about him. He did do work on the side of practice. Uh, they have practice today. They have tomorrow off. Then they get into their normal routine of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I think for George Kittle, it's going to be more important. How is he practicing? Is he full go on those days? If, if you brought up the uh, the Halloween reference, Croc. Was in there? Uh, was it like a Steven Seagal movie or something? Fully loaded. There is a Steven Seagal fully loaded. Is it okay? I think that's Steven Seagal. Uh, fully loaded. There we go. So uh, the D load is over. That means Brock Purdy is going to be fully loaded for Sunday against the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's important. Okay, more matchups here. What do we expect to see when the 49ers have the ball against that Pittsburgh Steelers? defense in week one next today's episode of locked on 49ers is brought to you by bird dogs i love my bird dogs uh the thing i love most about my bird dogs is how they are a fit and they are functional for any occasion uh i love golfing in my bird dogs uh, i've got bird dog pants and bird dog shorts my bird dog shorts have the liner inside so with my bird dog shorts i know i can go to a barbecue i could jump in a pool if uh if a pool party breaks out i can go play golf in them uh i can go to work in them i could go on a i, I am not a single man but i would imagine that it would be the perfect thing to wear on a date right uh lounging whatever it is and for me um i'm, I'm sort of a minimalist guy and uh, I like knowing that I have versatile clothes and I like knowing that, look, I don't have to think too much about it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting ready. I know I can reach for my bird dogs. If it's a little cold outside, I go long pants. If it's warm outside, I go short pants in my bird dogs. And I know that no matter the occasion, I will look good and I will feel good. Bird dogs, stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit a little bit slimmer through the thigh uh, and leg to give you that truly sculpted look. And they fit way better than your regular stiff shorts made of restricting cotton get rid of all those and go to the bird dogs that stretch in all the ways that you need them to stretch no matter the occasion and you can get yourself a pair of bird dogs and a very special gift that i'll tell you about in just one second but bird dogs uh what really sets them off is their uh in-house invented cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement and they have anti-stink sweat wicking fabric as well that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL and enter or enter promo code locked on NFL. Either one of those things will work at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Okay, Croc, um, really quick. That is that is the matchup. If, like, how much better do you feel about the 49ers offense, the 49ers offensive line, uh, Chris Furster, the 49ers offensive line coach, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, if Colton McKivitz goes out there, like, they've put a lot of trust in Colton McKivitz. If he goes out there in week one and says, yep, I got you, and handles TJ Watt, like, that changes kind of my outlook on what the 49ers can be all season long. You, you don't really think that about one offensive lineman in most cases, but he's one of the biggest question marks in a team that has stars everywhere. He, he's got to hold it down. And, you know, I'm hoping that what we saw in the preseason and not so much in the first two games, but in that third game, you have most of your starting offensive line out there, and I think they did a terrific job of protecting Brock Purdy, uh, giving him time to be able to kind of – decipher through his his reads and excuse me uh figure out where he wants to go with the ball they, they did a really good job of that and in the run game like the holes were really opening up we saw them in the last two preseason games as well so can that continue and i think colt mckivis will be a big part of 
uh, the consistency in the run of the game because the 49ers can't run the ball. You know, they're going to be in trouble. They got to be able to stay ahead of the sticks. Uh, but again, I think part of it is going to be on Kyle Shanahan to figure out different ways to slow down the pass rush, keep them off balance, right? So what did he do early in the the Broncos game with Brock Purdy out there? Big play action early on, uh, hit Debo Samuel behind the line of scrimmage, let him catch and run. Then they came back with a screenplay to Debo Samuel, let him catch and run. I think those things are going to help slow up the pass rush, but also help them kind of, okay, is it a run, is it a pass, and then boom, you hit him with a run, but just keep them off balance. Aside from TJ Watt and uh, the the edge, the other edge guy, which is uh, Alex Highsmith, both very good players. They got Nick Herbig, the fourth round pick that looked awesome actually in the in the preseason, and it's kind of frustrating actually how the the Pittsburgh Steelers they get to they get to steal all these tweener guys. And, and do you remember in the draft back in 2017, TJ Watt was thought about that. He's like, ah, he's kind of an outside linebacker. Maybe he's not stout enough to be an every down defensive end. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are sitting there at the end of round one. And they're like, oh, cool. You're going to pass on TJ Watt. He's perfect for us because we're okay. You the know, Cowboys to uh, Taco Charlton like to play the pick before. He right before him, yeah. Who's now on uh, IR. Did he, he got a waiver. It was an injury waiver settlement, right? Is that how... The season ended for uh, Taco and the 49ers before it got started. But, um, yeah, it's like Nick Herbig was another one. It's like, you love the film, but he's like, oh, he's kind of short. He's not really a fit for an every down edge guy. And the Steelers like, perfect, man. We've been doing that for 30 years, just stealing longer than 30 years, just stealing those mid-round edge guys. They did it with Highsmith in the third round in, in 2020. And the, the players that are kind of tweeners for other people are a perfect fit for what the Steelers do. And, I think teams need to start being okay with a little bit lighter stand-up style edge rushers because of how often teams are in uh, sub now anyway. And like, you know, they're, they're edge guys like TJ Watt plays the same position as Nick Bosa, you know, but TJ Watt goes at the end of the first round instead of the beginning of the first round, because I ah, a little light, maybe he doesn't fit. It's like, no, nah, he's, he fits and he's a terror. And uh, the Steelers just keep finding those types of guys, but they got some studs on the inside. Cam Hayward's been playing in the league for, what, a dozen years now, and he's still playing at a high level. They drafted second-rounder Keanu Benton out of Wisconsin, nose tackle. Uh, like him, a big old Montravius Adams as well on the inside uh, when they're in those base sets. And then Larry three, three, be as well. Yeah, three, four. They, they run more of a 3-4. So if you hear us right. talking about why, as a, he technically is an outside linebacker, him and uh, uh, Highsmith, and then Cam Hayward, he is a 3-4 end Yes. So it, that's, you know, he's inside, of course, especially in kind of base situations, but they got three bigger guys with the outside guys. Um, they can stand up or put their hand in the dirt to rush the passer. So right. just in case anybody's confused by that. And then like third down situations, you know, Adams is going to be out of the game. Hayward's going to play your normal like three tech uh, as long as, as well as uh, Larry Ogunjobi on the inside. Then you're going to have TJ Watt and uh, Alex Highsmith. They might have their hand in the ground. They might be standing up, but they're playing the edge position and they're, and they're, Russian from the outside. So um, it's a really good group up front for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so not only do Trent Williams and Colton McKivitz have their handful of the interior guys do as well. So that, that's a huge matchup that'll decide this game. And, and, you know, that's decided a lot of 49ers games in the past when the 49ers won in the trenches. So that's, that is one of the biggest keys in this football game. And so it's going to be big time football up front in week one. I think there's an even bigger key, right? Like, how do you stay away from Minka Fitzpatrick? And I know we're talking about the Steelers and their defense, and it's like, oh, man, you got to be worried about this, worried about that. But they got some game records over there. I mean, the fact that we talked about uh, Watt, and then we got to Highsmith, and then finally you get to Hayward, like, who's a terrific – I mean, how many – What he had double-digit sacks last year, yeah. I believe. So, yeah. I mean, they have a lot of guys that can really wreck the game. But you start to get to the next level. And I think the chess match between Kyle Shanahan and the linebackers – uh, Holcomb and Roberts, like that's going to be interesting. But then also the safety, and this is, I talked about Michael Myers being the boogeyman uh, or TJ Watt being Michael Myers. I don't know what we should call uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, but he's got to be, I don't know, Jason Voorhees or some. I mean. Uh, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger gets you when you're sleeping though. I guess maybe if you fall asleep a little oh, bit and it's yeah. like, oh, we're going to throw it over. and, and Yeah. 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 <laughs> you don't see that Robert. Maybe he's uh maybe he's like the Joker, right? 
Yeah, he's, he's like that that robber. He comes. No, out we, we can't disrespect George Kittle. That that's George Kittle. George Kittle is the oh, joke. True. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. We can't do that. But, but like, but what, what what he does, man, and that's a tough thing because the 49ers, with who Brock Purdy is, and I know uh, people don't want to say he's like Jimmy Garoppolo, but they definitely win in a similar area of the field, like where they feel comfortable. Things in front of them, throwing over the middle, right here, I get the ball out quick, uh, accurate, and they hit those areas. And maybe that's Kyle Shanahan. Maybe it's just his offense, and that's where he has these guys living, but they're definitely more comfortable there. The, the tough thing is that is where guys like Mika Fitzpatrick can live. And if he's down and he's a robber, I mean, this is a guy who I thought it was a no-brainer at pick nine in 2018. Take Mika Fitzpatrick. This is a guy who started as a freshman, true freshman on Alabama. You you don't see that a whole lot. He was a terrific leader. He was, I mean, just an amazing ball hawk. His versatility, it, it was, everything about him is like, of course you take him. Dolphins took him. He wasn't with whatever they had going on there. And then he goes to the Steelers, and I'm like, of course he goes to the Steelers. And ever since then, he's been a terrific player. And even if you might be able to get him here and there, he can hurt you. Like he, he can make that play. And, and that's the thing that I worry about really with these guys at each level. Uh, how do you move him? Is it on Kyle Shanahan to kind of manipulate Mika Fitzpatrick, maybe do some window dressing, get him moving over here because you know you want to go over here and hit this area? Is it on Brock Purdy to, uh, in his ninth or eighth start, whatever it is, be this like savvy veteran and know how to uh, play mind tricks on Mika Fitzpatrick? But what do you do? Because he is a guy that, he will burn you like he, he he will if if there if that opportunity presents presents itself. So you you really kind of have to worry about that, especially for a young quarterback that you have back there, there out there who still has a lot of growing. And I know Brock Purdy played so well last year, but there's still a lot of things he hasn't seen, and there's a lot of growth. And we'll see him continue to get better. Part of getting better is having these ups and downs, and you just hope that it's not at the expense of them throwing the ball to Mika Fitzpatrick. I love that one. And I want to go actually a little bit deeper on that one with Mika Fitzpatrick. And we talked a little bit off the air because on the uh, uh, on the side of the screen, if you watch us on YouTube, I put Purdy versus Mika. Is it Kyle versus Mika or Purdy versus Mika? And some more matchups in this one when the 49ers have the football against that Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Next. Today's episode of Lockdown 49ers is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book and Come on, you are already ready for NFL season. I don't have to tell you to get ready for the NFL, but there are tons of incredible offers at FanDuel, America's number one sports book, including right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed, no matter what happens to that first $5 bet, win or lose. Plus, all customers, not just new customers, who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. Uh, it's safe. I love both the app and the website. You can maneuver around, find all the bets you want from spreads to player props to building your own parlays. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. That, that's one of the things that I think we're going to learn a lot about Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers. And we're going to learn, learn about it twofold. One of the things that we've talked about Croc in the past about not really like how good was Jimmy Garoppolo? It was hard to know because there was, the, there was nothing to compare Jimmy Garoppolo to. It was like, well, he's not as good as former teammate Tom Brady but he's better than former teammate C.J. Beathard. And there's a pretty big gap between, like, how good is, is Jimmy Garoppolo? So we're going to learn a lot about Garoppolo going back with his old offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels, in, um, in Las Vegas with the Raiders, right? And then be able to compare what Jimmy looks like in a different offense with a different offensive coordinator. And then we're going to get to see what Brock Purdy looks like when it's his show under Kyle Shanahan – and that that sort of Jimmy Garoppolo interception that it's kind of I think it might be kind of the it might be the Kyle Shanahan interception because we've kind of seen it a few times from uh, Trey Lance and we've seen it from Brock Purdy 
and he hasn't got burned on it a lot, but Mika Fitzpatrick is one of those. And when you get like that really good, smart linebacker that knows how to read what's going on and can move before the ball's thrown, or you get a really good safety. Uh, and we've seen the, the 49ers get hit with that before guys like Jesse Bates and um, you know, Minnesota was like, it, it was Harrison and uh, the linebacker, right. That, that got the 49ers with interceptions or near interceptions and that robber coverage and, and dropping down and, and understanding like, okay, I'd seen this concept a million times. Like I'm, a am an all pro player, veteran player in the NFL. I've seen dagger. I've seen all these concepts. I know that the dig is coming here. So I'm going to look like I don't see it. And you're going to pretend to look me off, but I'm going to jump it and I'm going to get in front of this pass. And I, I don't think it's necessarily if that kind of throw happens, I think we'll know it's the Kyle Shanahan interception as much as it was the Brock Purdy interception or before him, the Jimmy Garoppolo interception. So I I wrote down Purdy versus Minka, but I think you're right, Croc. There is a lot of Kyle Shanahan versus Minka in this one. Right. And, and Kyle Shanahan, it's his game plan. And we know that he kind of wants his quarterbacks to be a little bit of robots. Do what I say. If you do this and you hit it right where I need you to, it'll be a big play. Right. Uh, and then that kind of leads me kind of to the, the next part. Right. The uh, defensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers, which name is Terrell Austin. Yeah. And how is Austin going to slow down or how is he really going to just defend Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey, because I think I look at those guys kind of as a pair. You do some window dressing stuff with Christian McCaffrey to, to get the ball in Debo Samuel's hands or vice versa. Right. But put Debo in motion. Some eyes go to him. Then you come back and then boom, you hit either uh, Christian McCaffrey with a run where you get some linebackers kind of spread it out. And then boom, you hit up right up the gut or you throw the ball to him out of the backfield. Um, we've seen them do a lot of different things with those guys, line them up both in the backfield at the same time. So uh, how is Kyle Shanahan going to window dress those two guys against Austin's defense? And the, before we came on here, I talked about how I've been watching Suits. And I know there's some people that started watching in like 2011, like dude, whatever. It's on Netflix now. I was still playing ball. I wasn't watching shows from beginning to end when I was playing ball still. Oh, that's an old show? I didn't know it was around that long. Suits is an old show. It's over. Oh, okay. Yeah, but um, it just hit Netflix. So now, obviously, everybody. Oh, okay. That's Netflix why everyone killer. was watching. I thought it was a new show because I'd never seen it. It just hit Netflix. So, okay. yeah, I watched like eight seasons on Netflix and then the last season on uh, Peacock. But anyways, I know. Named after you, huh? No pun intended. Still not so, seeing the individuals there, man. Well, one thing about suits, man, they have this guy named Harvey Spectrum. He, he, he damn near makes me want to be a lawyer. Dude, dude's amazing. All right. But he always kind of knows what his play is. And he's like, all right, I'm going to do this because I know they're going to react this way. And then when they react that way, I'm going to do this and hit them this way. And I'm going to win, uh, you know, this case or whatever. And I feel like that's kind of Kyle Shanahan and his window dressing of things with Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel, where uh, Christian McCaffrey, I think a lot of what he's going to be is not so much a decoy, but he's kind of the cheese, right? Like he's the cheese in the sense of setting you up for something and hoping that eventually you're going to take this bait. And the moment you take this bait, there's going to be a big play by Debo Samuel. There's going to be a big play by Brandon Ayuk. There's going to be a big play by George Kittle. Like it will happen. And it's really hard to uh, limit those big plays and hitters because you have to pay attention to the cheese, a.k.a. Christian McCaffrey, because if you don't, then he can be the one that gives you the big hitter. So uh, Austin, the defensive coordinator for the Steelers against Debo and Christian McCaffrey. What is your plan for them? I, I can't wait to see that battle. And by the way, are we going to see former 49er Quan Alexander, who is mixing in like their their linebacker group? Uh, apparently, they're, they've got like three or four guys they, they feel are, are starting level and they, they filter them all in. And I saw Quan Alexander on the field in the preseason, and he's wearing number like 26 or something. Yeah. He's wearing a number in the 20s. I don't know if he's going to he's going to keep that number into the regular season, but uh, look he looks sweet. Weird. He looked like a DB wearing it. And he's he's the he's the he was the Dre the the Dre Greenlaw before Dre Greenlaw, right? Former college safety, became linebacker, NFL linebacker, fast run and hit guy, a little too amped up sometimes, like like Dre Greenlaw. Uh, he was like he was Greenlaw 1.0, so um, it'll be fun to see him on the field. But yeah, use their aggress aggressiveness against them. Um, you know, Kyle 
more than any position group, Kyle will take advantage of another team's linebackers. And it's not the strongest group. The, the, the Steelers are really good up front on the defensive line. They're front four or five, depending on what uh, defense they're rolling out there. And then the guys in the back end, you got Patrick Peterson that's still going. Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, they got the first round rookie, Joey Porter Jr. Or no, sorry. I think it was the first pick of the second round rookie, Joey Porter Jr. That is playing a backup role there. Levi Wallace um Desmond King is there as well Keanu Neal so they got a ton of guys in that secondary but the linebackers are, are a fine group of Landon Roberts and Cole Holcomb and Quan Alexander they're a fine group but Kyle does a really good job of taking advantage of those and, and that's where the 49ers operate over the middle of the field as we know so um th- this is a big Debo Christian McCaffrey game and, and I think you hit on something Croc that I saw teams do last year and I thought it was a detriment to to a lot of defenses that played against the 49ers is they they paid too much attention to Christian McCaffrey. As good as he is, like if McCaffrey pops off a four and a half yard, five yard run, I mean, that's okay. Like you don't want to give up a 15 yard play behind you because you're worried too much about the running back. And, and Kyle was feeding off that and Purdy was feeding off that. And so I think I would play the 49ers a little bit more straight up than teams did because there's too many other ways that they can be. That's definitely going to be something key to watch. And I'm curious to see what the Steeler fans are going to say about some of these things. Are we right or wrong with these matchups? Because I went and read the comments this morning. Usually I kind of stay away from reading comments. And I don't know if you checked in on it. The Steelers are heavy in our comments right now. Yeah. There was a bunch of them on our live show uh, Sunday night. When we were doing it and most of them were respectful and uh, and having a good time because you know sometimes some fans will show up and you can tell that someone dropped a link in some message board somewhere because all of a sudden a bunch of fans from the other team will show up, come in and they'll start talking trash and you know they're usually really dumb and probably nine years old and you know 13 <laughs> years old and whatever you know yeah this is dumb and so you kind of block them or whatever um but there's some you know there, there's a lot of smart the Steelers have a really good fan base and not just a crazy fan base they have they have a smart fan base and a loyal fan base um, and it would be interesting to hear what some of the Steelers fan has to say. And, and I'm sure there'll be some knuckleheads in there as well. But it's not like uh, they're very much they're they're not like the Philadelphia. I know it's Pennsylvania, but uh, they're very different Pennsylvania fans. The Steelers fans versus the the Eagles fans. Yeah. Did what did they say? Them? Did they did they take um, just anything we said? They, they no, they were very. Uh, like you said, kind of respectful. They were just like, oh, man, like this is good stuff. You guys are great. Can't wait for the game. And, yeah, they were really cool. It just was interesting to read our comments and just notice that there was a huge difference. It was all Steeler fans. Or, mm-hmm. like, I'd say, you know, three out of four comments were from Steelers fans. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's big time. I got to go check that out. Yeah. Shout out to all the Steelers fans that are listening to Locked On 49ers. That's the best way to know you learn your your uh, who you're playing against is locked on. I was doing that before I be uh, became a one of the co-hosts of this show. I would go in and I mean you can listen to them every day. So whether you're working or working out, it's like man, let me go listen to Locked On Steelers to see what's really going on with this team. And I like to listen to how that those hosts view our team, right? Like so, yeah. if you're a 49er fan, go listen to Locked On Steelers and hey, what is their you know, perception of the 49ers, what issues they think, you know, how do they feel like they can attack the 49ers and see if that kind of aligns with what happens come Sunday. Do you think that we're giving them too much respect? The Steelers, man, because I do feel like we've said a lot of positive things about them and it might come off as if, you know, we think that the 49ers are kind of out, outmanned in this. I don't think that at all, but I do think they are a team that they can punch you in the mouth. Like, I I feel that more so on their defense than their offense. But if their offense catches up, and again, that goes along with just what I saw in preseason. I mean, when you watch a quarterback, regardless of if they're going against backups or whatever, you have five possessions and five touchdowns. And all the reports out of the camp were glowing remarks for Kenny Pickett and what he was doing offensively. To me, it's just that's – you know, you, you got to you, you gotta respect it, <laughs> I, I think, a, a little bit. And this is a team where you want to say, oh, no, man, their quarterback's Kenny Pickett. This is a guy like, no, like, he wasn't great last year. Like, man, you got Brock Purdy. But you mentioned it before. Even before this preseason, your co-host, Williamson, who did he say he would rather have at quarterback? 
Yeah, w- Williamson was, and by the way, he he covers the Steelers for Steelers.com, uh, DK Pittsburgh Sports, former ESPN guy, former NFL uh, scout. Um, by the way, check out Peacock and Williamson every day here, covering the entire league on the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, he he was basically like, look, it was it was a really cool run and a great story, but I'll take Kenny Pickett with the 49ers weapons and Kyle Shanahan all day long over over Brock Purdy. And I think there's a lot of people who feel that way. And, and there's a lot of, uh, and I, I don't, I, I'm not surprised people. And I think people should be a little skeptical, right? Because we, and, and 49ers fans too, should be a little bit like, we saw how it went with Jimmy Garoppolo. I was like, oh my God, found the next great quarterback. Let's pay him the most anybody's ever been played in NFL history. And it's like, ah, uh, he's okay. You know, after that, but he was amazing in that first season. It was like, ah, he's okay. He's, you know, fine. Um, and, and so th- that could potentially happen with Brock Purdy. He's not the most physically gifted guy in the world, and, and neither is Kenny Pickett. Um, but both these guys need to have big year twos for their respective teams. And I, I think it's fair for anybody that is a fan of that team to fully believe in Kenny Pickett if you're a Steelers fan, fully believe in Brock Purdy if you're the 49ers fan, and completely fair for people on the outside looking in and say, I don't know, Brock Purdy wears gloves on both – I mean, uh, Kenny Pickett wears gloves on both hands. He's not the most physically gifted guy in the world. Um, And I I still want to see it, right, because he – you know, he he, it was very dink and dunk last year, but he did throw a good deep ball occasionally. Like one time a game, he would kind of let one go and, you know – uh, George Pickens would go get it. And then with Brock Purdy, it's the same. It's like, okay, they had an easy schedule at the, in the regular season. He's not the most physically gifted guy in the world. It's mostly Kyle Shanahan. Got all the weapons. Get the ball out quick. Let Chris McCaffrey and Debo Samuel and George Kittle all do the work after the catch, right? Uh, those are completely fair takes. And so we're going to learn a lot about which one of those is right. And if it's somewhere in the middle with both of those quarterbacks and they'll both go a huge way because there's a lot of talent on the, on both of those rosters in deciding how good these teams are ultimately. Who will be more dependent on having a great defense? I think they're very similar, man. You know, actually, you know, who's at the Steelers are almost more similar to the Seahawks in a way where it's like, they're just, they're well coached and they're consistent and you know, they're going to be a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? And that's like kind of the, the Steelers have been, the Steelers have been, I think, so my Matt Williamson, my co-host of Peacock and Williamson, he just turned 50 years old recently. There have been three head coaches in his lifetime of the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> like the most stable organization there in the playoff hunt every single year. They are so stable. So you should never be surprised when this team is good and they're going to compete every single time. Right. And so if you don't have your stuff together, the, the Steelers can beat you, can beat any team almost every year, even in a rebuild year like last year with a rookie quarterback. Um, I don't even know. What... I want to say it was the Bengals like week one. Yeah. They beat the Bengals week one with Trubisky and then went on a nice little run at the end of the year, too, winning like six of seven or uh, six of eight or something like that and won four straight at the end of the year. And so um, yeah, this is, they're, they're, this is a really interesting team. Um, that's that's going to be in the playoff hunt, the Steelers are. And the 49ers should absolutely be in the playoff hunt as well. Um, I would say the Steelers, though, still a little bit more dependent based on what they're off. Because the Brock Purdy version of the offense was still explosive last year for the 49ers. You couldn't call the Steelers offense explosive last year. But they got some pieces. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, Croc. Uh, I can't wait to see how this all turns out. Shout out to the Steelers fans as well that are out there. Let us know in the comments on YouTube what we got right, what we got wrong. We appreciate you. Um, shout out to all the, the 49ers faithful, all the everydayers out there. Make sure you are subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. little Winky Wednesday action tomorrow. I think it's time for some season predictions, Croc, and then we'll get back into the nitty-gritty. Uh, Chris Carter going to join us, Locked on Steelers, for a crossover as we get ready for week number one this week on Locked On 49ers. Talk to you then. Rock and I'll be back with you, Locked On 49ers. Subscribe to this video.